look to other books for information. But look only to the Bible for transformation. Because transformation comes through God's word. No atheist can enjoy the Bible's influence so badly as a Christian who disregards the Bible in his daily life. No unbeliever can destroy the influence of God's word than a believer who knows what the Bible is talking about, but choose not to apply the Bible words in his life. You enjoy the Bible. Therefore, the Bible will not be a dry book for you if you know the author. If you know that the author of the Bible is God himself, the Bible will never be a dry book to you. Our topic this morning is the powerhouse of God. The powerhouse of God. Many believers don't know that they are God's powerhouse. Many Christians don't understand what it means to be God's powerhouse. Who is a powerhouse of God? How can we determine somebody who is God's powerhouse? By the way, do you know that you are God's powerhouse? Many Christians don't know that they are God's powerhouse. In every aspect of your life, are you going for interview? Are you CEO of a company? Are you even the lowest rank person under the rank and file position? You are God's powerhouse. Look at what happened to the man called David. David knew what it means to be God's powerhouse. The Bible told us in 1 Samuel chapter 17, When the enemy in the form of, when Satan in short, in the form of Goliath, stood before God's people, presenting himself for 40 days. And the Bible said, every soldier of the people of Israel went hiding, including the king, King Saul. And here comes David, not by accident. The father said, come, take this food and go to the battlefield and see how your brethren are doing. And give them this food. And here comes David. While David was there in the camp of Israel, here comes Goliath with his armor bearer. Insulting the people of Israel. Looking down on the people of Israel. Causing spirit of depression to come upon them. Paraded himself and said, you people of Israel, bring out somebody to fight against me. If he kills me, we will become your servant. But if I kill him, you become our servant. Paul went, Saul went hiding. Every soldier of Israel went hiding. They forgot about the God of Israel. They did not remember that the God who keeps them do not sleep or slumber. They totally forgot everything called the promises of God concerning their lives and their calling. But David was in the camp at that moment. He could not stand these insults. He could not stand this humiliation. Have you been humiliated before? When people look down on you, show you cold, so, show, show you cold shoulder. They don't want to talk to you. Maybe in your workplace, you know, when they want to cut you off, they just avoid you. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to even look at where you are. Whatever you say is wrong. Everything you do becomes wrong. They forget all the things that you have done in the past. How, how you've been used to bring in blessing or even resources into the company. They'll just put you one side because Satan has stirred up anger, stirred up hatred against you. But David knew. He could literally remember when the prophet came to the home, their home, and anointed him. He could just feel when the Holy Ghost came upon him. Woo! He said, hey, there's something here. So when the challenge came, he could not stand still. 
Church, listen, when you have the anointing of God upon your life, you can't stand still and see the devil humiliating God's people. Something will begin to bug you in. You begin to say, what is this? I can wage this war. I can fight it through the grace of God. David asked a question, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What will be given to the man who challenges him? Here his elder brother Eliab said, quiet. We know your foolishness. We know your pride. Have you ever faced that? When you try to speak out, people say, quiet. You think you know the Bible? You don't need to go to Bible college to know God. Thank God for Bible college. Thank God for theology. But I want to tell you something. Many people who went to theological college, they come out with blophology. Are you all there? We all went through it. But make sure you don't stop at theology that brings blophology. You got to know your God. Daniel said, those who know their God shall do great exploit. David knew it. Let me call the story short. Words were sent to King Saul. These guys said he is able to face him. And Saul said, no, son, you are still a youth. This man is a warrior right from his childhood. You cannot. David knew what it means to move in anointing of God. He said, the God who saved me in the hands of the bear and the hands of the bull and the lions will save me. He remembered the faithfulness of God upon his life and the goodness of God. Do you remember God's goodness and faithfulness? He knew there is something in him. He knew that he that's in him is greater than he that's in the world. He knew that the power of God is in him. He knew that he's not going to this battle with his own strength, but by, by the power of the almighty God. And he went. And he felicit and called Goliath. Cursed David by the name of his God. And said, I will take your flesh and give to the birds of the earth. David said, you're right. Yours will be that flesh. Because he knew his God. He was powerhouse of God. And God used him to destroy Goliath. He chopped off his head and with his own sword. Because he knew. Church, listen. The battle we are in is not bad man-made battle. It is not natural battle. It is a spiritual war. Therefore, we need to move in with spiritual power of God. He knew it. And he moved on to destroy Goliath. I don't care what is in your life. It could be disease, it could be the sickness, it could be problem around you, it could be family problem. Will you believe this morning and say, I am God's powerhouse, therefore I am going to be used by God to destroy these works of the enemy. Many of us are fighting ourselves. We become like sickness that eats, sickness in people's body that eats of the, you know there are some sickness in the body that eats of your body. Without you knowing it. We're literally fighting ourselves. Without knowing that God has given us the grace, the strength to fight and to win. Because the victory has been, already been given to us. This is what God has done for us. You turn your Bible a moment. In the book of Genesis. Let me show you something real also. Genesis chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 24 now. Let me bring out this. Very clearly. Concerning the man called Jacob. Genesis 32. 24 through 30. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him. The socket of his. And it. Socket of David's, uh, Jacob's lips was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 
So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. And for you have struggled with God and with men, and I prevail. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Here, there's another example. David knew that he was part of God in manifestation and he did the work. But here, Jacob did not even remember that he is God's powerhouse. The Bible told us, Jacob was left alone when he was coming back from his uncle's house. Moving back to the land of his birth. Before he could cross the river. He was left alone. He began to wrestle with angelic being. This angelic being in theology is called Christophany, which means Christ in the Old Testament. The angelic being. If you watch that angel, it starts with a capital A. That's what made it different from other angels you see in the Bible. Whenever you see capital A in between statements in the Bible, it talks about Christophany. That is Christ in manifestation, in manifestation in the Old Testament. So here, he fought throughout the night and the angelic could not win over him. And what happened? The day is breaking and the angelic being just touched his socket of the hip. And it was out of joint. And he asked him, let me go. He said, unless you bless me, and angelic being bless Jacob. And Jacob asked, he asked Jacob, what's your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, now you're not going to be called Jacob, which means cheat. You are now going to be called a prince because you have prevailed. Now, what are we trying to tap here? Jacob did not even know that he was God's powerhouse. And many Christians are like that. Jacob did not know that he has power to stand against every foe that come against him. How do we know that? In verse 3 of the same Genesis chapter 32, it said, Then Jacob sent messengers to before him to Esau his brother in the land of Seir, the country of Adam. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants. And I have sent to tell you, my Lord, that I, that I may find favor in your sight. Then the messengers returned to, brother, to, return to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother, Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, and 400 men are with them or with him. They gave him something he did not want to hear, a story he did not want to hear. They told him, we are coming from your brother Esau, but we want to tell you something. 400 men are with him coming to meet you. He did not want to hear this kind of news. How do we know that? Look at verse 7. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that were with him and their flocks and herbs and camels into two companies. He was so scared when he heard that his brother is coming to meet him with 400 men. He said, wow, how am I going to face him? Then he remembered what he did in the past. I cheated him, I ran away, I thought all this over. Now he's coming, I'm going to pay what I've done. Fear came in. You see that? But he did not know that he was God's powerhouse. Therefore, when God saw that this guy is scared, it's like, what am I going to do with this guy? Upon all my promises, and now listen carefully. Look at verse 9. Even though Jacob, even though Jacob knew God's words, the promises of God, he was still scared. Look at verse 9. 
Then Jacob said, oh, God, my, God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the messes and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. For I crossed over the Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. For you said, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the son of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. It seems he knew all the promises of God. He knew what God had spoken to him. He remembers them. It is in his heart. He, rem he remembers them. But still he was full of fears. Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. Therefore, when God saw all these things, look at this guy. I told you to go back to your family, and I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. Your descendants are going to be like multitude. Why are you still afraid? God knew it. Then God said, you know what? I am going to confront him now. Then God has to come in verse 24 to fight with him. Just to let him know that he has power. Many of us don't recognize the authority that the Lord has given to us. We have authority. We have power. God has embedded into us his presence and his power and authority for us to go against the forces of darkness. That's why when I see Christians, when they are sick, they think they're going to die. You'll be shocked. Some young people, age 35, 40, when they're sick, they tell their wife, uh, you take care of children in case I, uh, I may not come back from hospital, you see. I think the best thing is to tell them, okay, why not I pray for you, sorry, I just conduct the funeral before you die. They're scared. Scared. Children go to school, their wife is at home. I don't know if they eat or not. That boy don't eat. He go and play. Uh, he, she's at home worrying. Next thing, they turn around, I don't know. That, that boy, he's intelligent, but I, I'm worried for him. Because there is no challenges in the school. What, what do you want? You want your son to go and challenge Satan, is it? No challenges. Everything, no challenges. It, oh, especially women. Sounds familiar. The moment they come back from school, what did you eat? How, how many people did you play with? Uh, what, what was it? How much did you eat? No rest. They are sitting at home. God gave them the grace to be housewife. But I tell you, they are more worried than those who are even working in the secular world. They forget that they are powerhouse of God. They can sit at home and command. And something will happen. Something will happen. Because you are God's powerhouse. Wherever you are. God has put that power, authority in your life. Jacob did not know this. God has to fight with him. Then after that he realized. All he was looking for was blessing. Many of us have become blessing oriented people. God bless me, bless me. God bless me, bless me. You've already been blessed. All you need to do is to begin to use the blessing to bring glory to the Lord. That's what we saw there. Jacob did not realize. Saints of God, many of us are like Jacob. We don't even know that we have power in our lives. We think that God is no more there for us, but God is there. We think that, oh, what are we doing? Fear and anxiety has eaten up into our spiritual strength. We become like weaklings. We become like people without strength, orphans without Heavenly Father. Fear. Have you been caught up in the vicious circle of fear and anxiety? That's why people are having high blood pressure. Everything they... Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What is your problem? Can you relax before God? We always behave like Jacob, not like David, who dared to challenge the powers of the enemy. We must not allow Satan to put us where we're not supposed to be. We must not. Then we must always remember that if the Lord is with us, no one can be against us. This is something that we must learn. We are the New Testament believers. God knew that we need 
strength and power with authority in order to represent him here without fear. But the problem is we don't realize this. When there is shaking in your workplace, you don't need to be afraid. All you need to do is to remember that God is able to save you from that situation and let you be what he wants you to be. It's time for us to remember that we are not weakling. We are not people who are known to be weak. We are people of God, full of power and strength of God. When you speak for devil must obey. That's why Jesus declared in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power. That's how God knew that we need this power in order to sustain. And when the power is come upon you, you shall become witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and utmost part of the world, everywhere you are, which means wherever you are, you will be powerhouse of God. When you go for interview, before you enter into the room, outside you arrest every power of opposition before you go in. When you go, every knee must bow. The Bible says, in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. That's why Jesus declared in the book of Luke 24, 49. Luke 24, 49 says, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Until you receive the promise of the Father. Tarry ye there. Go before God. Go in his presence. This is something I learned about Jesus. There is no way Jesus, during his public ministry, see him praying. But he commands. Because he does the praying behind the veil. He does his homework. When he comes out for public ministry, he commands. Come out in the name of Jesus. Let it be according to your faith. You speak for the word of authority. There's something we must learn. In the book of Luke, chapter 10 in a moment. Look at what the Bible says. For you to know that we are powerhouse of God. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It says... Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That Jesus speaking. I gave you authority to trample upon serpents and upon scorpions. All these serpents and scorpions are symbols of Satan. And over all the powers, it didn't say some, all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. It does not matter what the problem is in your home. It does not matter what the situation, sickness or disease. Will you remember Luke 10, 19? I gave you authority. Everybody say, I received the authority. That Jesus said, I gave you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing in any form shall hurt you or harm you. That Jesus speaking. Jesus meant what he said, and he said what he, he meant. That's God's word. And that's why when Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is power unto salvation to those who believe. Power. I'm not ashamed of it. So when you go out ministering, don't be afraid because the gospel of Jesus Christ is power. When you speak forth the word, something happens. Because God honors his word. Even if you are scared. Sometimes people are scared because it's, oh, that is, it's like eerie. When you feel scared, remember. The gospel of Jesus Christ is power. Therefore, I command every power of demonic influences to go. They will go. They try to scare you, you cast them out. Because you got the power. God gave you the authority. The gospel of Jesus Christ is power. 
to those who believe. In the book of Matthew, a moment, chapter 18. Matthew 18, look at verse, first of all, in chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus is speaking. 16, 19, Jesus spoke, he said, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Look at that. Jesus is speaking. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. That's what Jesus said. He gave all the keys of the kingdom that whatever we bind is bound. Whatever we lose is loose. When you bind, it shall be bound. When you lose, it shall be loose. This is God's word. I shared with you what happened. One time I was called to pray in a Eurasian family's home. When we went there, I went with my friend. This Eurasian family has a very huge compound with walls. And he has this German shepherd, two of them, huge. I mean, when they stand, they can be taller than me. Huge. Probably weighing nearly about 50 kg. Huge. So when we came to the gate, I tell you, the barking of that dog is like the roaring of the lion. So, boom. I mean, when they say it, you just... You, the, the, the dogs doesn't need to touch me. They just bark, you will die. You just whoa, whoa. And they come to the goat and stand like that. My, the guy with me called me, oh, Brother Daniel, we better back off. Because the way I'm looking at these dogs, they will tear us into pieces. So, okay, I was holding my Bible. So, okay. So then I've already known who I am with. <laughs> so my God, this guy is worse than Gehazi. <laughs> At least Gehazi showed that he was afraid by saying, those there are greater than us. This guy told to this, not, not a single faith. He just told me we are going to be torn into pieces. I look at him. I didn't say a word. In my heart, I said, Lord, strengthen this man's faith. If I go with this, son, I think, the dogs will eat, only our heads will be seen. But this guy is faithless. So what happened was, we thought to get a gun, the other one came, two of them, whoom! So that guy went to run, I said, don't run. He said, no, he's not going. I said, shh. So I told him, listen, you are holding Bible. He told me, yes, I'm holding Bible, but this one. So I look at the dogs, in the name of Jesus, I command you. Now, for the Bible says, what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I lose, I lose in heaven. I bind you, sit down, both of you, in Jesus' mighty name, and move nowhere until we come out. Both of them sat down, not even wagging their tail. Sit down there. We open the gate and come in. We walk in, right in. Then the guy saw us from upstairs. Wow, how did you all come in? We smile. The dog is sitting there. He forgot that he had two dogs. They are sitting confidently and comfortably at the gate, not moving. Sit down there. We walk in, pray for them after praying. Spent nearly about 15 minutes there. Going back. It's okay, thank you, thank you. We walk off, reach the gate open, cross over, and the dogs are still there. So the brother said, what about the dogs? I said, we must teach them lesson. Next time they see servants of God, they don't need to back. They'll be sitting there, down there. They will not move from there. So on the way, I saw that he was not convinced. I said, okay, come. Are we not out? He said, yes. I'll command them to get up, you see. He said, okay. So we cross, make sure you lock the gate. So we lock the gate, check it, it's locked. You are freed in Jesus' name. Go. They got up. Then, hope. I told him, one more time, I'll teach you another lesson. So we walked. Now, you see, binding and losing. Binding and losing. Jesus said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. That's what Jesus said. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18, 19, 20, look what it says there. Matthew 18, 18, 19, 20. As surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I said to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that you may ask, 
it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered, where they are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Look at that. There are things we can find out here. Jesus said, whatever you bind a bound in heaven, what you lose, you lose in heaven. I remember another incident where I went to see a guy, he's not a Christian, he's a nominal Christian. I went to his house two times, I couldn't find him. And there was, I had, I mean, an urgent case to talk with him. Two times, wasted my money, ran up and down, he, he wasn't there. The third time, I called my friend, I said, what? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind that guy, he'll be in his house when I come. No matter where he is, he's going to come back and be there. He will never leave that house until I walk in. The guy said, this is a weekend. That guy is a traveler. I said, let's see. I came in. The moment I came, it took me eight hours to reach there. I drove when we reached. I saw him pack his suitcase going around in the house, in his house. I looked at him, what's up? He said, boy, I'm supposed to have left an hour ago, but I don't know why. It seems I forgot something. I'm just going around. I can't remember what it is. I sit down. I said, okay, go ahead until you remember it. He went out, sat in, and said he can't remember that something is missing. He can't remember what it is. The suitcase all prepared. He was about to leave. He continued going around. I sat down there for 30 minutes. He couldn't remember what it is. I called him, hey, listen. I hold the key. I've come to your house two times. I couldn't find you. And I can't be coming that way. So today, I bind you. You will never leave your house until I walk in here. Boy, the guy sat and said, look here. Don't pray this kind of prayer. Now, when ask me, how come? Because he's not a Christian. You can't bind a Christian. He's an unbeliever. Therefore, we have authority over, over people and influence over people. Then I told him, I sh he said, show me the Bible. I show him, wow, i never seen this before. I said, you don't go to church. You're not a Christian. You're just a nominal Christian. How will you know? There is power in binding and losing. There's an incident where Five years old child, five or seven years old child, was coming back from church with a mother. This child, that day, the pastor was preaching just as I'm preaching, binding and losing, authority of a believer. And after preaching, they were going back, this girl and a mother. Just a pub across the road, there was a rattlesnake coming. And you know, children, she was going in front, the mother was at the back. So she saw the snake and said, why didn't you cross while we were in the service? How come you have to cross now that we are coming back? She was speaking to this snake. The mother didn't know. The mother was at the back just coming. He said, okay, I will not kill you with any instrument, but I'll kill you with the word of God because the Bible said, what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I lose on earth, I lose in heaven. Therefore, I bind it. Turn around and die in Jesus' name. The snake turned around and died. How do we know it died? The stomach was up. Then, the mother came and asked, girl, what's up, what's up? He said, mom, snake. Hey, run, run, run. He said, no, mom, he's dead. He said, how, how do you know? Mom, I asked the snake why it did not pass before we came. Therefore, when we bind on earth, we bind heaven. When we lose on earth, we lose heaven. I bind it and said, turn around and die. And snake turned around and died. So who taught you? Mom, pastor was just preaching now. She started crying because maybe the woman was thinking about lunch, thinking about chocolate thinking about what to, how to wash the clothing, how the children will go to school tomorrow, did not listen to the message. Maybe that's what is happening here. So your children end up teaching you what has been taught, and that was what happened, binding and losing. Try it out and see what happened in your own life, because God has a plan for your life. And it said to us right there, where two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, the Lord is there. Now, let it be that in your home there are somebody sick, be it your father, be your mother, be your auntie, be your maid, be anyone. Bible said, where two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, the Lord is there. And whatever two of you agree on earth as asking shall be done. Agree with your husband, agree with your child, and pray over that person you see healing will take place. Because that's God's word. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. This is God's word. Apply God's word and see what happens. Apply it. Apply God's word. And this is what happens. I shared this a couple of times with you. There was a time when my boy couldn't go to the toilet for two days. 
I look at him, what's up, what's up, what's up? He said, cannot go. That particular day, uh, Pastor Poir has to come to our home, so we tell him, so he prescribed the medicine to get. So they wanted where to go and get. In my heart, in my story, I said, how can it be? So if this medicine is given to this boy, then no glory is given to God. It cannot be. Toilet, come out in the name of Jesus. And this guy, <laughs> straight away, it came straight. It is your right, it's your power. Because God gave you that right to command, come out. And it must come. Because that is your right. A lady came back from school of ministry. Enter her home. She's scared of cockroach. And the cockroach play hell, havoc with her. She remembered what was told to her. She said, cockroach, wherever you are, I command you, come out dead in Jesus' name. And what happened? Ants carried the dead cockroach out. God is real. Just believe it. Faith in action will always prove that you are God's child and that will make you to realize that you are God's powerhouse. In the book of Matthew chapter 21 verse 22, the Bible declared very clearly, Matthew 21, 22. It says, And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe in you will receive it. Whatever thing. It didn't say some things. Whatever things. You ask in prayer, believe in, you will get it. Be it even you are, you are traveling aircraft seat. They tell you it is packed. There's no seat. You can demand it in the spirit. And you'll be shocked. There'll be one seat created out of it. Somebody can decide to drop out. And you get it. Because you're a child of God. In the book of Mark chapter 9 verse 23, the Bible declared and said, all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to you if you believe all things. If you pray, believe it. You have it. In the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 37, the Bible said, all things are possible with God. For with God, all things are possible. If you will believe. Now, in the book of Mark, a moment. Chapter 11. Mark 11. Look at verse 22 through 24. What did the Bible say? So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, And does not doubt in his heart. But believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's Jesus speaking. Whatever thing you ask. Whatever means whatever. It didn't say something, so whatever means whatever. It will be yours. I'll be very frank with you. If you come out for prayer three times and I pray for you three times, nothing happens, something is wrong. Either something is strong with you or with me. Because surely something, nothing is wrong with God. Something is strong. Because God answers prayer. No one will knock at the door of God without God opening. He said, knock, it shall be opened. Seek, it shall find. And ask, it shall be given. Just take it literally like that. And that's God's word. That's his word. In the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. There God spoke very clearly. Is anything too hard for me? That's a question God is asking you this morning. Is anything too hard? It does not matter what you're going through. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing. God does not repay things, but he restores them. We're not talking about trying to fix up things, but we're talking about restoring. He restores your life, restore your family, restore whatever that concerns you. Whatever you've lost, God will restore them back. If you have been cheated, if you have not been shown justice, God will intervene and restore back what belongs to you. In the book of Romans, that's the good one. Romans chapter 4. Come with me in the book of Romans. 
chapter 4. Look at verse 17. Romans 4, 17. It says, As it is written, I have made you father of many nations, in the presence of whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead, and called those things which do not exist as if they did. Abraham believed God who called out the dead. He believed God who reached out to him and made him father of many nations. Calling out those things which were not as if they were. Believing God for it. Even in the company where you are, if there is no position, God is able to create a position for you. Calling out those things which were not as if they were. And look at what Abraham did in verse 19. Bible said, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham did not consider the hindrances which he sees. There are hindrances that may come up. There are things that you see with your eyes. No, it will not work because it is like this. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That is not the way. Don't look at impediments. Don't look at the roadblocks. Don't look at the impossibilities. But begin to believe God that things are going to be all right. When you believe, you will receive. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not consider his own, the deadness of his own body. Remember, not that Sarah was born, the womb is dead. Abraham's body is dead. The deadness of his body. So it is a, it's not just one side. Both of them are dead in their body, body system. He did not consider these things. How many times do you consider? Oh, because it's like this, I won't get it. Just because it's like that? No, that's not true. God is able to make a way where there's no way. In verse 20, it says, He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He did not waver. He did not say, I, I, I'm not too sure. I'm, no, no, no. He just believed it. Begin to give glory to God. Thanking God for the best that is coming. It's like as we've been talking that we are believing God that our children are going to be president scholars. You don't need to look at maybe your child is scoring 60 max. 65, maximum 68. You say, how can he be or how can she be president scholar? Nothing is impossible with God. You'll be shocked at that final. Your child make maybe 95, 95 and become a present scholar. What is going to determine your child is not because other exams he scored 90, 90. At the final exam, if she gets 60, she goes nowhere. She had to fight the battle or he had to fight the battle to the end. So don't you believe that God is able to turn the tidal wave around? And make your child to skyrocket in her, his or her max and become the present scholar. Then you say, I, I didn't believe it. Ooh, I didn't believe it. Yeah, you didn't believe it, but God, you know, overrule your unbelief. That's why that man said, Help our unbelief, Lord. Overrule it. In verse 21, it says, And be fully convinced that what he has promised. He was also able to perform. This is something you must know that. Whatever God has spoken, God is able to perform them. God has the power. He has the authority. He has the strength to perform whatever he has promised you. Nobody can rub it up from you. In verse 22, And therefore it was counted, accounted for him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us, it shall be imputed to us when who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If you believe in the book of Isaiah 7, 9, the Bible said if you do not believe, you will not be established. But in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 says, if you believe, you shall be established. God will do it and he will do it. He has done it before, he will repeat it again. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14, the Bible declared that God will put his word in our mouth. The word God put in our mouth will become fire and the enemies will become like wood. 
So when you speak for the word, something happens because you are God's powerhouse. In the book of also Jeremiah 23, 29, the Bible said that God's word in your mouth will be like hammer. It will crush the works of the enemy. Speak for that word. And you see what will happen. Because God always proves himself. When you walk by faith, God will back you up. Heaven will hear you. And heaven, heavenly hosts will back you up. In the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19 through 20, the Bible declared and said, God is not a man that he will lie. God is not a liar. Has he spoken, won't he do it? Whatever God has spoken will come to pass. We receive to bless, we must bless people. That's what verse 20 said. We are commanded to bless, we must bless. Don't curse anyone. Because God is not a liar. His word in your mouth is like fire. In the book of Isaiah 55, verse 11, the Bible declared and said, no word of God will come back to him void. It will accomplish what God has said and it will prosper. Isaiah 55, 11. Yes. Whatever God has spoken will come to pass. No word of God will come back to him void. It will accomplish what God has said and it will always prosper. In the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, in case you're sick, for this reason Jesus was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the enemy. Sickness in your body is the works of the enemy. Therefore, it has to go. Therefore, when Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Philippians, chapter 2, in verse 9, 10, and 11, he said, God exalted Jesus and gave him a name that's above all other names. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. Every sickness, every disease must bow. Because no sickness can stand before the presence of the Almighty. That's what he must know. When you are praying, you got to know God's word. Because you are God's powerhouse. You are God's powerhouse. You always seek to please God and not to please man. And wherever you are, always be in touch with God. America is the world superpower today because of one thing. What is it? Communication. Wherever they are, they can communicate to each other. Pentagon can pe communicate to any of the arms, armed forces. Any moment. Because of communication. Therefore, what makes you who you are is your prayer life. Communication with God. Communication. You cannot be anything you want to be in the Lord except you're a man or woman of prayer. And prayer is not just five minutes prayer. Uh, you try to use your mind, but you try to use your heart. Communicate with God. Tell him your inadequacies. Tell him your problem. Speak to him and make sure you don't invite evil in your life that will corrupt you. There are many so-called men and women of God today. We have harbor hatred unforgiveness, bitterness in our lives. And now we're praying, oh Lord, you know, oh Lord, you know. Yes, God knows because you are having bitterness. That's what he knows. Be open to God and tell God, here am I, Lord. Cleanse me, wash me, because bitterness is a poison. The book of Acts, chapter 823 tells us that, that bitterness is a poison. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, in verse 15, says that bitterness is a pollutant agent. It pollutes you. Don't have all it. It is rather good that people say, ah, he doesn't know. He's not smart. He's so foolish. He doesn't know what I'm trying to do. It's okay. You are foolish for Christ, but they are foolish to Satan. That's the worst fool they can be. Live for God. This is what God is telling you and I. Therefore, in evangelism also, the Bible makes provision for evangelism. In case you go for evangelism, how you are going to deal with issues in the book of Mark chapter 16 in a moment. Mark 16. The Bible declared, in case you're witnessing to somebody, and what the Bible say concerning when you witness, what will follow on you? Mark 16, verse 15 through 18. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Not demons casting you out. You are casting out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take out serpents. And if they drink any deadly drink, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's a powerful promise God gave to you. 
That is why when people who go for evangelism, who go for mission, they see tremendous miracles. Tremendous. Because something happens when you release your faith. Back up with the word of God. I will lay my hand upon the sick, they shall recover. Sick shall, be, shall recover. The blind shall see. The deaf shall hear. The lame will walk. Because you spoke for God's word. You speak in new tongues. You will tread upon serpents and scorpions. Nothing will harm you. Not at all. Not at all. Because God is backing you up. Because you are God's powerhouse. In your home, it could happen. Just believe God. Pray over your children. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Reach out to them and call upon the name of the Lord on their behalf. The Bible told us in the book of Job, chapter 1, that Job was praying for his children every day in case they have sinned against the Lord in their heart. Do you pray over your children? Do you pray over them? Maybe you come back late, they're sleeping, you lay hand upon them and just, you don't need to go there and say, and go and disturb them. You can just lay your hand and speak from your heart. And let God's hand cover them and protect them so they don't have nightmare. Reach out and begin to do something for the Lord. Tell the Lord, I saw this in the word, but I'm not seeing it in my life. I want you to use me to heal somebody. The Bible did not say only pastors are given the authority. It is given to everyone, every believer. He that believes this sign shall follow. Do you believe? Then that sign will follow you. In whatever you're doing, in every situation, every circumstance. Many times, there are times when I run around to do God's thing, I tell the truth, the petrol finish inside Singapore here. Petrol finish in the car. And I, how no, eject. Uh, uh, I say, oh, oh. But that doesn't solve the, oh, oh, doesn't solve the problem. So I have to say, well, Lord, I thank you because you're always here. Let this car move. It has to move until we get petrol. Because I'm not ready to push it. Therefore, I thank you because you gave us power over elements. In the name of Jesus, car, you got no business to put me on the way. Keep on moving until we find petrol bank. It will do, do jet again. That is testing and trial of faith. Don't say, ah, oh. no, no. Tell the devil, take up your hand. Car, continue moving. And stop moving. Finish. It's over. But that time when you are tested, ah, oh, your faith drop. The car will die there. It will, choo, 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 choo. Because that's the, how your faith went. Jo, 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 jo. Then the car also. Jo, 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 jo. Then you have to push it. Maybe if you are blessed when you're pushing it, rain will come. Then you get baptized nicely. Then when you reach home, you get fever. Ah, because you, lose, you lost your faith. So the devil will begin to, from one, look, the devil will not stop at one place. That's what the Bible says, don't give him a room. If you give devil allow, he will not only take the allow you get into one allowance. So if you give him one room, he's not going to take only one room. He will take the whole house. And it's not enough. He will take your relatives also. Not enough. He will continue to eat through. Therefore, don't give him room. So in the book of Matthew, before we close, Matthew chapter 28, see how God also bless us that he will be with us to the end. Matthew 28. Verse 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. You see what he says? He did not say, just go and do this work. He said, I will be with you. That's assurance. I will be with you till the end of the age. I will be with you. Therefore, you know that you are God's power. How? Don't be like Jacob who did not know that the power and authority of God was in him. He allowed Satan to bring fear into his life. To make him like a chicken. To make him like an orphan without a heavenly father. Wherever you are, remember that you're God's powerhouse. That you are the one God wants to use to challenge the force of darkness. God wants to use you in this end time to bring glory to his name. Wherever you are, but all you need to do is to live right. Speak no evil of any man. Think no evil of any man. 
But see people with the eyes of God. See people as God sees them. Let no man be condemned before justice is shown. Many of us, we always use the principle, you are guilty before claiming innocent. But let everybody be innocent before being called guilty. It is something for us to learn that we always give room for people. People might make mistakes, but that does not mean that they make that mistake till they die. Sometimes they make mistakes. Give room. Give room for tolerance. Give room for accommodation. Accommodate people. Always give room. But don't give room to become part of sinners. Remember that God has embedded into you the power. He gave you the authority. Nothing can stand your before you if you don't give room for that. If you stand clear and say, I will live for Jesus, and I'm going to proclaim God's word, you will see miracles following you. Miracles will follow. Don't be a prisoner of yourself. Every time you're angry to yourself, every time you're angry with environment, every time you're angry with things around you, it's time for you to come out from the shells and say, I am God's powerhouse. Everybody say, I am God's powerhouse. One more time. One more time. I know my right. I know my privileges. I am Christ's ambassador. Wherever I go, shout of hallelujah will follow. This is all you need to know. Wherever you go, there will be shout of hallelujah because you bring glory. You are carrying God's glory. You are God's vessel. Wherever you go, be it your children. Pray over them. I'm going to close. I share this testimony with you. A man came to me concerning the, the wife who was pregnant. The baby is now more than nine months in the womb. Even the fingernails had grown, according to doctors. The child couldn't come out. They don't know why. So they are planning maybe induce or not induce. But the woman wants the child to come out naturally. That's the third child, a son. They came to see me. So when they came over, I came down to see them. They said, Pastor Daniel, look at the situation. This child is overdue, more than nine months, and there's no move. He's kicking fine, he's nice. So I told him, Madam, it seems you're so selfish, you want to keep this baby for yourself? I said, she must make some kind of joke. She said, no, Pastor, I want him to come. I said, because it seems you're enjoying. So you don't want us to see. So you're enjoying carrying big stomach. So he said, no, I want, but I don't know. It's more than nine months. So I said, okay. They're sitting in the, their car. So I put my head inside. Baby, it's time to come out. In the name of Jesus, come out. Enough. They look at me. I think the prayer was too short. You know, people want long prayer. But sometimes, no need to pray long prayer. You give instruction. That's all. So they tried it. Hardly have they traveled up to a pole away. The baby began to kick to come out. Water back burst. So they rushed from there, they rushed all the way to hospital. Less than an hour, they call me. I answer. The brother said, Pastor, you know what happened? What happened? Baby's out, isn't it? It's not prophecy because you already told to come out what? It's not a prophecy. He said, Yeah, he's weighing 3.8, you know. I said, Only yeah. They were happy. You have every right to command. Come out. It'll come. If you go on the way, there's a stray dog try to be funny with you. Command that dog out in Jesus' name. That's when you're a very nice person. All the command is turn around. <clears throat> so what we're trying to tell you that there is power. Please don't abuse God's power. You don't go around in HTB flat now. Any dog, whoop, whoop, say, turn around and die. Please don't do that, become animal abuse. <laughs> so please don't do that. Or you go around, maybe even your children, maybe their friend, make them feel uncomfortable. Say, I bind you in Jesus' name. That guy. <laughs> so please don't bind, don't bind, don't abuse God's power, but use it for the glory of God. Use it for the glory of God. Use it for the glory of God. You are God's powerhouse. And God has destiny for you and I. And God wants to use it in this end time to show for the light 
in this dark world. May the Lord bless us as we hear his word. When you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart.